Happy sunshine, boys and girls. Welcome back. It is Monday, August 21st, about 11 p.m., a little bit after. And before this day rolls over into the next, uh, I wanted to get on here and put some of my vibration and energy towards uh, this whole Hat J case that we've been following. And as you've seen, from following through the videos about YouTube's response, the way they manipulate the view counts, the way they manipulate the search returns, um, it's hard enough to find information. Um, I've been contacted by somebody and, and we've both been trying to find the, uh, the original source media to, to verify this and and it is just about impossible to do so. We, we can't find it. So I'm putting out a call for help uh, and a call for love. Uh, someone who is part of the family that is following these videos remembers watching somebody, maybe it was Neil Wolf, I don't remember, uh, that, that's the suspicion right now, but in this coverage, this same day coverage that was outside the courthouse present when this identity hearing was going on, somewhere, uh, what, what the information is is that somewhere there's a video that was out accessible to everybody, we can't find it now, <clears throat> that mentioned uh, Parker Steele, Parker Still having a, a, a Bluetooth headset or a hearing aid or something like that. And that would be absolutely material to this case. If you remember that, please send me an email. If you have any love, light, or links to send on this matter, uh, please do so. Uh, I'm looking for the original source documents. Um, and while we're on this idea of documentation, um, there's some things that you guys can do to help out. Uh, whenever you come across anything that's related to this case, you can go to archive.is and you can paste the link in. And then you can click save page. Now this is just uh, another article that's popped up about the ISS transiting during the solar eclipse. Because you see this page here, it means that this has not been archived at archive.is yet. If the link that you put in has been archived, it's going to pop up with, uh, with an image of what that page looked like on the day that it was archived and then there'll be a button up towards the top and you can request that it archives another copy uh, so that you can you can start tracking the changes in websites uh, uh, across time and and it's really important uh, with the way YouTube and and Google have been censoring and hiding search returns and manipulating uh, uh, the very systems uh, that we use to get information, uh, it's really important to, to start backing stuff up. So I like archive.is. Uh, if you are so talented, please, I, I release these videos under a Creative Commons license. Download them. Download them in the highest quality that you can. Because a lot of these transcript things have fine text on the screen and, and you really need the 1080 to, to truly follow along. So download these, archive them, uh, put them together in a torrent and put that out there so that the more people that find this, the easier it's going to be for them to, to get this information. That's how, that's how we can grab the reins of our own power and do something that is going to benefit us, okay? And it's just going to take all of us doing it, one, one link at a time. 
You know, you get through your first one, you'll find out how easy it is, and then you'll be doing a little bit more. Now, the we've been we've been trying to track down where where Heather is. I, I've searched for her again today using all the different numbers for the A number and you know all the different names and and she's still not popping up. Uh, the only information we have as to where she is is coming from BZ and that's that she's at the Irwin Detention Center at uh, the, you know the ICE facility Immigration and Customs Enforcement. So this is the only place where this information is really anywhere online. And the most recent phone call from last night with BZ and Heather, it, it sounded kind of strange given the state of where everything is and, and they kept saying they want to focus on the big picture and the big outcome and in a spiritual sense I totally get that. There was some other facet to that vibration and you know after having a night to sleep on it uh, what what I really think is they they've sealed up some leaks in in their in their hmm in their strategizing uh, on on how to move through the rest of this case uh, you know they're they've certainly they're talking about all the same things that, that we're talking about here on my channel uh, but they're just not doing it in public anymore and that's that's probably a smart thing and I don't know if you can hear that, uh, that my cat's got a <laughs> a wild hair up her butt and she's running around and, and crashing in the cabinets. Oh, there she goes again. <laughs> uh, so, the, you know, the, the part of the phone call that, that, you know, I really didn't have a perception about last night, uh, I think that is, you know, the, they're not saying things about the case, the, the legal aspects of this case. Uh, over the phone here to disclose to to the whole world um, and some of those very first phone calls after Heather was arrested uh, mentioned uh, the warrant being bogus uh, or that a deputy clerk had signed it or something like that so all of this information's out there and and I've just figured it out by piecing it together uh, just by reading the transcripts and looking at the paperwork. So her legal team is going to be able to do all of that. Uh, I, I mean, I'm looking at this without having looked at any, anything legal justice system oriented and, well, let's see, uh, 2005, so 12 years. Uh, so somebody who has been doing this as their career on a day-to-day -day basis is, is really going to understand what all of this means. And, and while we're talking about the people that are in the system, uh, it's really important, uh, as, as they keep mentioning in BZ and Heather's conversations, uh, about forgiveness and, and what the narrative is that is coming from Heather's camp about the One People's Public Trust of 1776 uh, is that this is available for any soul uh, to take advantage of this, this way out of this madness. And it doesn't matter which side of the madness you're on, it's about forgiveness. And it, it's really hard for, for for people, I think, to, to really honestly look at the level of corruption that's going on and to admit to themselves that that's going on in their world. It, it's, uh, there's some cognitive dissonance there. It, it's really, it, it's a spiritual journey to get to the point where you can admit that you live in a world that has these serious kind of problems. And 
I, I wouldn't have done it without, I, I could never have unwound all of this without a little help. And the very first time I got snapped out of my, my slumber was learning about uh, oil as an energy source and, and all the different things that didn't make sense about that. And, and I stumbled upon this book, Crossing the Rubicon by Michael C. Rupert. And, I mean, he, he grabbed me right away with, with the first few pages. He's, uh, he was a police officer in Southern California, and he was uh, tracking down a, a drug ring, and he went from California all the way to Florida tracking it down, and then down to uh, South America. And Michael C. Rupert, he's got family that was in the intelligence agencies and he saw some intelligence people down in South America that were supervising the loading of US Air Force cargo jets you know like the big C-130s with just pallets and pallets of cocaine and he realized oh shit I have been able to follow this trail all the way back to figure out that it's the government and the CIA that's bringing this, bringing all the drugs into our country. And so he's tracking this down and starting to investigate the government. And this is after 9-11. And, and he finds out, uh, he gets information and oh my gosh, you know, I'm investigating the government for, for drug smuggling. Uh, into their own country and and I find all this evidence that they're complicit in 9-11 so he writes this monster book and and it says right in the intro pages that this book is a complete uh, summary of all of his all of his ideas it's got all the supporting documentation like I've been giving you he's got all of that and he says I wanted any attorney to be able to grab this book and prosecute this case without any other information other than what's in this book. This is everything that he had at the time. And, and he feels it would be enough to convict a, a whole lot of people. The same people that Heather Ann Tucci apparently foreclosed on. So it was another cop that had woken up to the system being corrupt that ended up waking me up to really taking a look at the world. And another, another interesting stop is the Franklin scandal. And, you know, that leads into the whole topic of Pizzagate, which, you know, I've got some other videos on. That's kind of what, uh, what, motivated me to even start uh, start putting out videos uh, again after uh, a while off. And throughout Pizzagate, the, the common theme falls under the pattern of honey trapping. I'm going to read what honey trapping is to you. Honey trapping is an investigative practice that uses romantic and or sexual relationships for an interpersonal political or monetary purpose to the detriment of one party involved in this romantic or sexual affair. Investigators are also often employed by wives, husbands, and other partners, usually when an illicit romantic affair is suspected of the quote unquote target or subject of the investigation. Occasionally, the term may be used for the practice of creating an affair for the purpose of taking incriminating photos for use in blackmail. A honey trap is used primarily to collect evidence on the subject of the honey trap. Well, it's, it's really not occasionally. Uh, I, think, I think that this two-line alternative happens a hell of a lot more than we think. Now, without pulling the link up and making this, this 
too terribly long, you can look up uh, how the CIA, our, our Central Intelligence Agency, has a plan to be able to take over any country with 10 years and $10,000. And at the time this was authored, uh, you know, it, that's what the value of $10,000 was. I don't know what that figure would be today, but it involved just going to that country, finding the political center, buying a house, and throwing parties every weekend and inviting all the political figures. And then once they like your parties, then, you know, you hire a couple prostitutes. And they're at the parties. And, you know, you have the prostitutes hit on these politicians. And eventually, one of them caves in. And then you've got them on infidelity if they are married. And then what you do is you just gradually decrease the age of the prostitutes that you bring to these parties until you're bringing underage prostitutes like they're teenage girls and once you've got photo and video of a politician engaged in sexual conduct with somebody underage, male or female, then you control them because the mass society's perception is that that stuff is about as wrong as you can get. And what it seems like has happened, I'm not saying this is what's happened, but just based on all the things that I've researched and investigated, it looks like this second option or alternative definition of honey trap for taking incriminating photos to use in blackmail, it looks like that has blown up so big that it's basically turned into, into Pizzagate. It's turned into the Franklin scandal. Well, I haven't even gotten very far into this book it's just so powerful this is this is dark dark stuff guys child trafficking child abuse satanic abuse like like they get that stuff on film of one of these elected officials and Wow, all they got to do is say, hey, remember when? Little Sally or little Johnny, we got video of all of that. You do what we want you to do, otherwise this stuff gets out. And then you'll go to prison. And the worst thing in prison is to be a pedophile. You need to be in protective custody. Because nobody likes a pedophile. Nobody likes to think about our children being abused in any manner. And so where the compassion comes into this is realizing, wow, you know, these guys and gals are elected officials. You know, they... They got stuck in the trap before they, they knew that they were in a trap. This is the slippery slope. And it happens before you know what, before you know what happens. It, it just, in an instant, you go from, yeah, I'm getting a little bit extra out of this arrangement to holy crap, I have to work three times as hard just to make sure that that I stay, uh, stay where I am. People are holding awful information above my head that I don't want anyone else in the world to look at. The, the people that are in our system that are letting fake warrants pass through as valid, I, I got to wonder, how does that happen if there's, if there's any heart 
if there's any love in these people at all. And wow, you know, what's their perception? Well, they're trapped. They're trapped between a rock and a hard place. They're trapped in knowing what they did, and they're trapped in, oh wow, the system can tell us what they did, and instantly they're outcast, ostracized. Their entire life over in an instant. I mean, I'm thinking about Parker still steal. Like, he can never testify anywhere ever again. He can't be a lawyer anymore. He can't be a cop anymore. He certainly can't be a judge anymore. Not after what we've uncovered. Why would he do something like that? Well, people are only doing the best that they can. And, and as the best that they can do is to behave like they're behaving in this identity hearing, then they're then there's a reason for that. And I don't know what the reason is, but I'm saying, wow, I can put some other observations together that I've made, and I can paint a pretty convincing argument for myself, but, uh, you know, this is why forgiveness is so important. Because it's people like Parker Steele and anybody else who is obviously quote unquote bought off or on the corrupt list or, or, or however you want to label it. I, 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 I don't think they're there by choice. They're there because they're scared of what we're going to do to them when we find out about all this stuff. What Heather Ann Tucci has purportedly done with the One People's Public Trust of 1776 is to give everybody a way out through forgiveness. And the way you do that is by saying, I understand that in the past I have behaved in ways that are low vibrational and unhealthy for myself and others around me. And I see that there's a different way to, to move forward now. And I take responsibility for myself and my behavior, my actions and my decisions, and the authorship of my own perceptions from this day forward. If everybody does that, we're going to change the way we think about this world overnight. It's going to change the way it looks overnight. So that's where the forgiveness comes in. It's because shit like honey trapping really goes on out there. So Heather, wherever you are out there, You keep holding your light and holding your space. And I feel like the rest of us out here are waking up and shining our light and coming together on the same page. Just like to ask Grace again to shine any light and universal energies on everybody that is involved with this situation. Please give us all the observations we need to see so that we can unwind this in an easy, safe, and sane manner for the highest and best purposes of all involved. I love you guys. Lunacy at protonmail.com. Send me love, links, and light. Peace out.